In a period of hundreds of millions of years, with enormous pressure and heat, the Earth formed petroleum from decayed living matter. And in less than 150 years, by many estimates, we have bled the planet of roughly half of its oil. We have extracted roughly one trillion barrels of oil since the late 19th century. Most of that oil has been consumed by Western societies, and it has been, arguably, the basis for the enormous power and wealth of Western nations. Now we are confronted by the prospect of world peak oil. Peak oil is the point in time where the quantity of petroleum extracted from the earth begins to irreversibly decline. As fossil fuels are so deeply intertwined in our existence, particularly our food production, the results could be catastrophic, especially in the face of rapidly rising oil demand. And as oil becomes scarce and prices rise, the environmental destruction and human suffering will likely increase. And the competition for oil will get more aggressive. One of the most common questions that people ask is, do you think that the peak oil that you write about is gonna produce a global catastrophe? And my answer is, it already has. There are people dying right now as we're speaking. There are people dying right now over oil. There are governments being twisted and changed and seized over oil. The climate is changing because of oil. And there's a small group of very, very wealthy people who are getting richer and richer because of oil. Energy derived from fossil fuels has been the source of the incredible growth of the human population. It may be the single greatest impact fossil fuels have had on the planet. You can trace the human evolutionary success in terms of the rates at which we've been able to appropriate energy from our environment. There's virtually no human population growth for, let us say, 50,000 years prior to agriculture. But with agriculture, we began to modify entire landscapes, replacing other species with food crops that we wanted for ourselves. And the human species spread over the planet in greater and greater numbers. By 1800, we hit our first one billion people. So all of human history, all several hundred thousand years of modern human history, to produce that one billion people in 1800. In 1867, Colonel Drake drilled the first successful oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania. The second billion people took only 130 years, 1930. The third billion took only 30 years, 1960. The fourth billion took only 14 years, 1974. The fifth billion, 1987. And the sixth billion, 1999. So we've seen this explosion of population. And it's been fueled by the, by the availability of fossil fuels.
As population rose, so did consumption levels, driven mostly by Western industrialized nations. Our dependence on petroleum grew to roughly 1.3 trillion gallons per year, along with our dependence on an equal amount of energy from a combination of coal and natural gas. Consider this, that is 1.7 people per car in the United States, but 117 people per car in China. If every Chinese were to consume the way Americans do, you know, we would need six planet Earths to support the, the global economy. A sizable chunk of China's industrial generated surplus will have to be spent to acquire energy, which then in turn will help them further improve their industrialization and it will create further energy demand and it becomes this vicious cycle. They are absolutely terrified about this cycle of increase in demand, further increase in industrialization, and increase in demand over and over again. It cascades from there on. China has gone berserk in its energy demand. There has never been a country in the history of the energy business that has increased its energy demand by 20% in one year, and China did it in 2005. Let's suppose that uh, tomorrow somebody discovered a limitless free source of energy that could completely replace fossil fuels. Would that solve our problem? Well, frankly, I don't think so. For us, it, right now, it may seem like fossil fuels is the limiting factor for uh, continued industrial growth. But if we solve that problem and continue growing, growing our economy, growing our, our extraction and use of other resources, we'll just hit upon another one, and probably very soon. I would guess within a matter of years or, or a decade or two, we'll hit the next wall, whether it's fresh water or topsoil or minerals, phosphates, and so on. It's okay to imagine that, you know, we can, as we get to each one, we can make up for it. You know, the human mind is so, uh, you know, clever that with each one, we would able, be able to find some substitute and just keep growing exponentially forever to the point where I suppose we would have a uh, human population such that there'd be 50 of us standing on every square foot of space on planet Earth. That's not going to happen. There are natural limits. So if we find an equivalent to fossil fuel, if some substitute comes along, if technology is indeed as successful as economists suggest that it may well be, and there's no corresponding change in the values and beliefs and assumptions behind the growth dynamic, then the planet is doomed.